the exam paper C1 Jan 2005. There are 10 questions, 75 marks and the time is 1 hour 30 minutes. That's a total of 90 minutes. So let's start. The first question is an indices question. So the question is write down the value of 16 to the power half. So it falls under the indices question and it is we write 16 to the power half as 4 squared to the power half and the rule of indices is if you have a power over a power then the powers are multiplied so it would be 4 to the power 2 multiplied by half and this 2 and this 2 cancels off so the answer would be 4 the next one is 16 to the power minus 3 by 2 so 16 to the power minus 3 by 2 equals to 1 by 16 to the power 3 by 2 if the power is uh, taken to downstairs it becomes positive so if it was 16 to the power minus 3 by 2 if you do 1 by 16 to the power 3 by 2 positive the power becomes positive so it would be 1 by 4 squared to the power 3 by 2 again when you have a power over a power the power is multiplied so 3 by 2 this 2 and this 2 cancels and we know 4 cubed is 64 so the answer is 64 so the first one was indices so let me write it down this one was indices next one so this is calculus where we have to differentiate the first one so the first one 1a you have to be careful about numbering it properly so y equals 5x cubed plus 7x plus 3 now the derivative of y you have to give a therefore because this is a rule the derivative of y is dy by dx you have to take derivatives on both sides so now the derivative of 5x cubed is 5 times 3 is 15 x to the power 2 plus 7x the derivative is going to be 7 plus the derivative of the constant 3 is going to be 0 so we don't write that next we have to do d2y by dx squared this is nothing but the derivative of the derivative also known as the second derivative so the derivative of dy by dx is written as d2y by dx squared and the derivative of 15x squared is 15 times 2 is 30 and the power of x would be reduced by once it would be x plus derivative of 7 is 0 next is integral question number two so we have to find the integral of 1 plus 3 square root of x can be written as x to the power half always write down the power as a fraction it's always helpful and bring it upstairs so 1 by x squared is going to be x to the power minus 2 dx so let's integrate this so by the rule of integration what we can do is integration of 1 is x remember in integration we are joining things together so it's, it's going to increase so integration of 1 is x plus 3 is going to be the 3 and x to the power half it's going to increase by 1 so half plus 1 divided by half plus 1 minus x to the power minus 2 is also going to increase by 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 and there is going to be the constant of the indefinite integral so we can write this as x plus 3 x to the power half plus 1 is 2 1 the 2 plus 1 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 same here minus x to the power minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 divided by minus 1 plus c do it here it is going to be x plus 3 by 2 divided 
3 divided by 3 by 2 is 3 3 cancels 1 by half is 2 x to the power 3 by 2 this minus and this minus cancels and becomes plus and that would be x to the power minus 1 plus c so this is the integral let's move on to the next one so the next one is quadratics this falls under the topic quadratics given the equation kx squared plus 12x plus k equals to 0 it's a quadratic equation in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0 and we know that if you want to find a root the formula for the root would be minus b plus minus root over square root over b squared minus 4ac divided by twice a now we know that the root meaning the unknown value of x for this quadratic equation is actually depending on what's inside the square root because there's a restriction in math we cannot have a negative number inside a square root so if this b squared minus 4ac is negative in math we write it as less than zero that means it would be x equals to minus b plus minus square root of a negative number divided by twice a and this is we cannot calculate this so square root of a negative number cannot be calculated so in this case we can say that the roots are unreal actually there is a number of uh, way we express it we can call it unreal we can call it uh, imaginary imaginary we can call it complex complex is the most common name by which we refer to unreal roots so if b square minus 4 is is less than 0 the roots are unreal but here the question is has equal roots so when does it have equal roots if b square minus 4 ac is greater than 0 or equal to 0 in both the cases we get real roots so we can have x equals to minus b plus minus root over if you have something positive here so you're going to get two different roots one's plus another minus so if you have real roots there are two situations one real and different roots where we have b square minus 4ac greater than zero and another real and equal roots where we have b square minus 4ac equals to 0 so in that case it will be x minus b plus minus root over of 0 is 0 twice a so in both the roots would be minus b by twice a because plus or minus 0 is nothing so when we are talking about equal roots we are actually talking about where the discriminant this thing is called the discriminant when the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is equals to 0 so you write by the question b squared minus 4ac is equals to 0 so we are going to have b b is the coefficient of x so the coefficient of x is plus 12 so it would be 12 squared minus 4a is the coefficient of x squared so we have k here c is something that has no x it's free a free constant here it is plus k so equals to 0 so we can write 12 squared is 144 minus 4 k squared equals to 0 so from here we can take uh, this to the other side it will be minus 4 k squared equals to minus 144 so therefore k squared this minus and this minus cancels off 144 divided by 4 so we can cancel this we can cancel it as 2 to the 4 2 7 the 14 2 to the 4 again we can do this 2 3 the 6 and 2 6 the 12 and we can write therefore k equals to correct this k equals to 
plus minus square root of 30 now it's important to remember whenever you have a square when you send it to the other side it has to be plus minus square root this is very very important so the answer is going to be k equals to plus or minus 6 but the question is k is a positive constant so the answer should be k equals to 6 however it is important that you write plus minus then you select your answer you cannot just directly write k equals to 6 that would be wrong so this was quadratics discriminant let's move on to the next one this is solving simultaneous equations so this is in other words to solve simultaneous equations is to find the point of intersection between two pictures this is a Cartesian picture this is this is a line so we have a line like this and we have this is a quadratic picture we have a curve like this and they intersect at two points so we're going to have two values of x and we're going to have two values of y so it would be like x y and x y so that's what it actually means so it is very important to remember for solving this we need both the values of x and the values of y the common error is only to find the values of x so what we can do here is we can write this equation as y equals to 2 minus x so this has equation 1 I'm just sending this x to the other side this is equation 1 and we can write equation 2 as x square plus 2y equals to 12 and we can just write it as 2y equals to 12 minus x squared and we can call this equation 2 or we can also write therefore y equals to 12 minus x squared divided by 2 doesn't really matter we can call this equation 2 and then we can equate them so hence y equals to this twice x minus x equals to y equals to this 12 minus x squared divided by 2 so we can just cross multiply we can write 2 to the 4 minus twice x equals to 12 minus x squared we can just send this x squared to this side we can write x squared minus twice x plus 4 minus 12 equals to 0 then we can write x squared minus twice x minus 8 equals to 0 so we can do middle term break we know that 4 to the 8 8 into the coefficient of x squared is 8 so how can we break 8 4 to the 8 so x squared minus 4x plus twice x minus 8 equals to 0 so we can t we get back minus twice x that's called the breaking the middle term so if we take x common it would be x minus 4 if we take 2 common it would again be x minus 4 equals to 0 from this 2 I can take x minus 4 common in front and the remaining is x plus 2 so x plus 2 equals to 0 so therefore we have x equals to 4 or we have x equals to minus 2 now the sum is not done yet because we have one more thing to go we have to find the value of y so we can write when x equals to 4 y equals to let's use the easier equation of y both will give the same answer but this is easier y equals to twice minus x so if we use that so y equals to twice minus x x is 4 it would be minus 2 when x equals to minus 2 y equals to twice minus minus 2 it would be 4 so the answer would be x is 4 then y is minus 2 if x is minus 2 y is 4 this would be the answer of course it can also be written as x equals to 4 comma y equals to minus 2 x equals to minus 2 y equals to 4 it can also be written like that but it can also be written like that so this is solving simultaneous equation